Thank you for joining us. This video presentation is all about escape routes, fire protection, and emergency planning. Let's get started. It is important for every facility occupant to know how to safely exit a building in case of an emergency. During a fire, or other types of emergencies, knowing how to safely exiting the building will save lives. OSHA requires that every employer develop and educate their employees on fire protection, prevention, and emergency egress, or fire escape procedures. You should know that fires and explosions kill more than 200 and injure more than 5,000 workers each year. History has shown that problems with fire exits and extinguishing systems are major contributors of these types of workplace accidents. For these reasons, OSHA mandates that employers provide employee training to prevent deaths and injuries in the workplace. Here is a diagram of an escape route. Please note that an escape route is a continuous and unobstructed way of exit travel, from any point inside the building to a public way, such as a street, patio or courtyard, or other open space. Every escape route has three parts. The way of exit access, the exit, and the way of exit discharge from the building. As a general rule, fire alarms are required if a fire could start without providing adequate warning to all occupants. There must be enough exit doors and adequate illumination to all exit ways in order to provide a quick escape, if necessary. And escape routes should have a minimum of 28 inches wide and 7 and a half in height in order to comply with fire codes. It is important to understand that you must never install any locks or fastening devices that will prevent employees from escaping the building from the inside. Chains, locks, or barricades blocking the exit door is a violation of fire codes and an OSHA violation. Please remember that all exits must be readily accessible at all times. If the room is occupied by 50 or more people, or the room contains high hazard content, the door for the escape route should have side hinges and it should swing out in the direction of exit travel. As you can see on this picture, the exit door has been blocked with boxes. This is a violation and it should never happen. Ensure that all building exits are maintained free of obstruction at all times in case of an emergency. All exits should be properly marked by a readily visible sign when the exit door or way to reach the exit is not immediately visible to occupants. If a door, exit way, or stairway is not an exit, or a way of exit out of the building, it could be mistaken for an exit, if not properly identified. Please, place a sign on the door, or exit way stating, that it is, not an exit. Also a sign that reads, storeroom, basement, or closet, is okay. If the nearest exit is not apparent, a sign reading exit, with an arrow indicating the direction of travel, must be placed in every location. Please, Take a look at the slide for example. It is imperative that every employer develop an emergency action plan to protect their employees from an emergency situation. The plan should describe what actions to take in case of an emergency. The plan should include a floor plan or map showing the emergency escape routes. It should also tell employees what to do and where to go in case they need to evacuate during an emergency situation. In addition, a fire prevention plan should be developed. This plan should include a list of major fire hazards, their handling, storage, and control procedures. The names and titles of persons responsible for alarm systems control and maintenance of fire equipment. And finally, all employees who have responsibility in the plan should be properly trained. If portable fire extinguishers are provided, the employer must mount, locate, and identify them so workers can access without risk of possible injuries. Please, never block or hide a fire extinguisher behind boxes or other materials. Familiarize yourself with the fire extinguisher classification list on this slide. Remember that not all fire extinguishers are alike. Class A works well with combustibles, such as paper, wood, and cloth. Class B works with flammable liquids, gases, and greases. Class C works better on electrical equipment, such as computers and hand tools. And finally, Class D works with combustible metals. Remember that employers must maintain fire extinguishers fully charged and in operable conditions. Fire extinguishers must be kept in their designated location at all time, unless in use. All extinguishers must be checked and maintained annually. 
Always maintain records of annual maintenance and checks for every fire extinguisher, if portable fire extinguishers are provided, and employees are designated to use them, the employer must provide, a training program describing the general principles of fire extinguisher use, and how the initial stages of firefighting progresses. Employees designated to use fire extinguishers must receive instructions and practice in the operation of equipment. Let's go over what we just learned. In summary, all buildings must have enough exits for quick escape. All escape routes must be marked, kited, and free of obstructions. Doors must not be locked or chained. Employers must have an emergency action plan and a fire prevention plan in place. Everyone should be familiar with the different fire extinguisher classes and firefighting capabilities. And finally, all fire extinguishers must be inspected and maintained annually, and designated employees must receive training on proper use. Well, that was intense. Did you enjoy? Cause I sure did. Remember that safety is everyone's responsibility, so...